Hello guys and welcome back to the island of Aruba. The island with a slogan, one happy island. If you want to know the story of any place on earth, you look at its statues and its flag. And here we've got the Aruban flag painted on a building here in Uranjestad, the capital. And you'll see it's got four colors, blue, yellow, red and white. The blue, the consensus is that that is the ocean or the Caribbean Sea in which Aruba is situated. It is less than 30 kilometers away from Venezuela. Now, the interesting bits, the yellow, you've got two horizontal bands. Some people say, well, quite simply, it refers to the sunshine of Aruba. It's a very sunny, dry place. Others say it has to do with the economic prosperity of the island, industries such as gold mining and aloe vera production. Others argue that it signifies the special status Aruba has within the Kingdom of the Netherlands as an autonomous country since 1986. And others say that the yellow also refers to the flora of the island. So some of the yellow flowers you'll find. Now onto the red. Red is the color of love, but also of blood. So the four points as well on the star represents the four points on a compass. So a lot of Arubans today come from all different parts of the world. And the red also signifies their love and also the blood that was shed by a lot of local indigenous people against the French at Frenchman's Pass. And the white, also called the Fembration, signifies the peace here on the island, but also the pristine beaches for which Aruba is renowned for. And guys, as I mentioned, I'm in Uranjestad, the capital. And the plan today is to explore this fascinating town here in the Caribbean. Aruba is part of the Dutch Caribbean and together with Curaçao and Bonaire it makes up what's called the ABC Islands. The ABC Islands are all part of the Dutch Caribbean, part of a kingdom of the Netherlands. And Aruba is the smallest of those three islands but it's got the second most people after Curaçao. And another thing about the ABC Islands that can get confusing for people is when you look west to east on a map it's actually ACB it's actually Aruba, Curaçao and Venbonne but it's called the ABC Islands and it is part of a Caribbean or Caribbean depending on how you want to pronounce it many people forget that it is part of a Caribbean people are more familiar with places such as Jamaica or Barbados or Trinidad and Tobago but this is very much part of a Caribbean Let's first walk down here the main street of Uranjestad. You can see it's got a tram line and my understanding is that it's been here since 2012. So connecting the people of Uranjestad. And just on the name Uranjestad, obviously it is Dutch and the translation is Orange City or Orange Town. So Uranjestad is not exactly a city. Now, I've actually struggled to get accurate population figures for Uranjestad. So if any of the locals could help me out, I'd really appreciate it. I think there's between 30 and 35,000 people in Uranjestad. And my understanding is that there's between 100 and 120,000 people here in Aruba. Here we can see lots of interesting art, street art. And it's very quiet in the area where I am at the moment, even though this is the main street here and it's called Kaya Gf Betiku Cruz. In the 1970s and the 1980s there was a large movement for more autonomy here in Aruba and Betiku Cruz was the key figure behind that. And as we walk around Uranjestad you'll notice slow pace of life so it's really an island vibe here and it's great just to immerse yourself in it. And as I said, this is the main street of the island and not a lot of activity. As we walk around as well, you'll see a lot of Dutch architecture, colonial architecture and obviously also a Caribbean touch in terms of its flora. And Aruba, the temperature all year round is around about 30 degrees Celsius and it's actually a very dry climate, which is unusual for the Caribbean. So not a lot of rain in this part of the world 
compared to some of the other parts of the Caribbean and it's below the hurricane belt so which also makes it a useful place for rich people to come and park their yachts in some of the harbors also obviously Aruba is a very popular holiday resort on my way here the flight was full of Dutch people from Schiphol and people who just want to break away from Europe and get a bit of sun and certainly they'll get it here and as we walk around you can see actually just how dry the climate is some of the plants there in need of a bit of water and obviously important to keep your hydration levels up in weather like this as well so local juices might come in handy later Yeah, first impression is I see a lot of clove shops here in Oranjestad. Quite profound. And I definitely see people adopting a very slow pace, way of life. Really relaxing vibe. And they do talk about island time in Aruba. So when you do come here, don't expect things to happen at a fast pace and nor should you because you're here to relax and to enjoy life away from the rat race, so to speak. So even ordering food at places or takeaway shops will take a bit more time than you're used to. Big Zara building there. lots of horse statues as well and I guess the reason being is that Oranjestad was first called Pardon Bai by the Dutch they're all painted blue as you can see over there as well more blue horses there we go and I guess a sign that says don't climb the horse and yeah yeah you've got some information on Pardon Bai or Horse Bay the West Indian Company Dutch West Indian Company involved here and livestock trade, breeding and trade would be seen as a main economic potential for Aruba during that period. Peter Stavesant involved here as well. So obviously a critical figure in the history of New York and also a popular cigarette brand in South Africa, Peter Stavesant. So he was involved here in the history of Aruba as well. I think he was a director general, the first director general maybe of Aruba so a bit of history there and wow look at this beautiful square here and yeah another one of the horses here and more history about the horse trade horse and livestock trade started during the Spanish period where Aruba initially had been considered an isla New Ital, if I pronounce that right, useless island by the Spanish conquistadores. So they mentioned the Spanish period there, so yeah, I've read so 1499, or I guess that ball says 1500. Alonso de Ojeda was the first Spaniard to visit Aruba, and the Spanish, of course, obviously were sailing in this part of the world around South America, but the Spanish never established permanent settlements on the island. So the Dutch established permanent settlements. Oh, wow, look at that, those swings. So I mentioned the Spanish, so 1499, 1500s, they arrived here, and then the Dutch West Indian Company, they took control of the island in 1636, so the 17th century. And the 17th century, of course, is also when the Dutch arrived in South Africa with Jan van Riebeek in 1652. So the 17th century, the Dutch influence in both Aruba and in South Africa. Yeah, look at that, Jimmy Two and Dutch colonial architecture coming together. The British also had a hand in the history of Aruba. They briefly took control of the island during the Napoleonic Wars. And then it was returned to the Dutch. It's really special, isn't it? These different colors. So Aruba was part of the Netherlands Antilles from 1954 until 1986. The Netherlands Antilles collapsed completely in 2010. My first memory of the Netherlands Antilles was with FIFA 98, where you could play on the computer with the Netherlands Antilles and win the World Cup. But nonetheless, let's not talk about my childhood 
football games too much. Betty Kukrus, also the main street, Oranje Stadt. But let's talk a bit more about Mr. Kruis. So, in the struggle for further autonomy for Aruba, he was very much the key player. So, in 1986, in fact, on the 1st of January 1986, Aruba left the Netherlands Antilles. And Mr. Kruis actually had a car accident on New Year's Eve, 31st of December 1985. And he went into a coma and he died on the 26th of November 1986. So Mr. Cruz never saw the autonomous Aruba. He went into the coma the day before they became autonomous. At the moment Aruba is part of a kingdom of the Netherlands. So it's an autonomous country within the kingdom of the Netherlands. And it's got its own parliamentary democracy and it's got its own constitution and it still has shared responsibilities for other external affairs Curaçao and Bonaire actually remain part of the Netherlands Antilles until 2010 when it finally collapsed but Aruba had a previous or an earlier move for more autonomy and yet Aruba is known as one happy island that is their slogan Here's some information for us, so you'll come to Aruba, some of the stuff you can do, beach, tennis, mountain biking and golf. So, some outdoor activities. And yeah, here's a map of the city or the town, so just to orientate ourselves, we are here in uh, Kaya Betiku Cruz, harbour of Uranjestad, which we'll explore in due course. But yeah, just check out these Dutch names, and as a South African, Afrikaans speaker, I absolutely love it. Look at that, Indrukstraat. Hendrikstraat and Kerkstraat, Elleboogstraat. I instinctively feel quite at home because of that. I actually want to get to Zoutmanstraat and Fort Zoutman as well to tell you a little bit more about the history. So I reckon let's go up here first and take you to Fort Zoutman. But in the meantime, just check out some more of the architecture here and lots of color as well in Oranjestad. Various types of shades of red and green and pinks, pastel pinks. Ah, oh, here we go, Klipstraat. And another plane in the skies. People coming to Aruba and a local supermarket. Oh, there we go, yes, I think that's Willem the Third Tower. And when we get there, I'll tell you a little bit more about it, but it's a very significant part of Aruba's history. Yeah, look at all these colors, the greens, and the reds, blue there, orange, and the mustard yellow. Yeah, just a lot of color makes a big difference, doesn't it? To your mood and just the overall feel of a place, so people who've watched my vlogs they'll know that I love color and so as a first impression I definitely love Uranjesta right, looks like there's some information for us here Uranjestraat 2 Uranjestraat 2 it's called a Kunuku house, countryside style house built in the first half of the 19th century. It was built from coral stone and originally had zinc roofing. There we go. Interesting. Uh, interesting. And a lot of people on bikes here making noise as well in Oranjestad. Anyways, the quaint and small Kunuku. So there, I've learned something. I've never heard of a Kunuku before. Here we go, and a nice outside area here, it looks like a little restaurant now, Italian restaurant. Oh, and yes, here we go, the Tower of Willem III. Let's check a bit closer. I think there was some information here, but I think the wear and tear of the weather, the harsh weather, the harsh heat, 
has had its bit to say. So here we go, that's the coat of arms of Aruba. Flowering aloe vera occupies the upper left quadrant. The plant is included since the aloe industry is considered to have been Aruba's first industry. And the upper right quadrant displays Aruba set in the sea and the elevation of a mountain is Hoiberg, also haystack. That's a translation. Shaking hands representing friendship with other nations is depicted in the lower left corner and the lower right section includes a ship's wheel demonstrating Aruba's long involvement with shipping and interaction with other nations. Obviously Aruba has a strategic location in the Caribbean Sea and together with Curaçao and Bonaire those islands were very much key to the Dutch West Indian Company at the time. And yeah, here we go, that's the Tower of William III, Willem de Derde. This tower was completed in 1868 and first lighted on the birthday of King William III of the Netherlands, Willem de Derde. Check this old style post box here. Drukwerk. So, print work, briefen, letters. Look at these symbolic cannons to defend the island of Aruba. Ah uh, yes, Parlamento de Aruba. And I think that's the governor's flag. Next to the Netherlands flag and the Aruban flag of course. We cross here. So here you can see marketplace. That's also a outside shopping area and lots of bars and restaurants. And I wonder who this is. Jan Hendrik Albert Eerman. Any Eerman. Defensor, so I don't necessarily understand the, I think that's Papiamento, which is the local language here. A Creole language consisting of Dutch, English, Spanish and also Portuguese. And maybe a few other languages, I'm not sure. But all I know is thank you in Papiamento means donkey, the same it is in Afrikaans. So here we go, the parliament buildings. Just opposite the entertainment area. Yeah, check out those pink flamingos here depicted. Here at Renaissance Resort, I think it's called. Welcome home, look at that. Single and rich this side, single and looking that side. I'm going this way. Oh guys, look at the line here, the Dutch pancake house, breakfast, lunch and dinner. I think this is where I'll come and have something for lunch. Right, I've waited about 20 minutes to get here, but let's look at their menu. So, some of the items there. Quite fancy a pancake. And you can get an idea of the prices. So Aruba, not the cheapest place in the world. I'll do a separate vlog about prices and what things cost here. But for now we're just gonna enjoy some food first. So I think I'm gonna treat myself to a Hawaii pancake, 17.25. And I'm also gonna have a Picasso. That looks interesting. 16. Fresh fruit, vanilla ice cream. So yeah, not the cheapest lunch, but hey, I'm on holiday, so why not enjoy it? And my food has arrived, so here we've got the Hawaiian. And there's your Picasso, which I'll treat as a dessert later, so yeah, here we go. Looks, looks amazing. Never had an Hawaiian pancake before, so here's a first. Very cheesy, actually. Lots of cheese. Obviously pineapple on pizza and that divides opinion, but I can tell you on a pancake it tastes like I'm a big fan mm. Of course a big difference is you don't have the crust As a pancake it doesn't have a hard crust like you have with a pizza Absolutely great Not just saying this guys, but I think this is one of the best meals I've had in a long time. This Hawaiian pancake. There's my Picasso, which I'll dig into in a bit. You can see the ice cream is just starting to melt. Right, time for the dessert, the Picasso. Cheers, guys. Have a nice day. Yeah, you all the best. Thank you. <laughs> so here we go, guys. Obviously, we've got some cream and some ice cream. Get a bit of that on there. And a 
we've got a strawberry so let's go mm. unbelievable pancake is so soft and yeah the ice cream's melted a bit which is what i wanted as well so really nice and runny on the the pancake but all the flavors of a fruit just the presence of the colors makes it a delightful dish so yeah i'm a big fan of pancakes now thanks to this dutch pancake house here in aruba adopting the dutch culinary treats including pancakes yeah guys a great lunch here at the dutch pancake house and uh, i can now understand why it was the only restaurant around here that had a queue so it's after lunch now so pretty deserted but hey let's uh, let's check out more of the places here at the center just opposite the dutch pancake house here you got a stage where some people can perform some music so i've heard the cultural scene here in aruba is also something to experience it's obviously a big mix of nationalities as a result you get lots of interesting festivals year round here you can see renaissance marketplace houses some charming boutiques live entertainment all over here in this arcade lots of places selling swimwear here you can come and get you sorted for the beach and the flamingos of aruba nice aruban flags check this out let the fin begin land shark and margaritaville yeah and just walking back here to the harbor area oh what a fantastic sight guys just lovely to walk around here just look at the trees it really is a a bit of paradise here in the world oh gorgeous day as well yachts parked here and check this out you got the flamingos here but you also have a red phone booth like the ones you get in the uk so wonder what that's about certainly the only one i've seen so far hello sir how are you, how you doing, sir? <laughs> very good hello hello <laughs> i have to say the locals here in urania start are not camera shy i've had a few people come up and talk to me so far so very good but yeah the flamingos of course very much associated with aruba but also i guess bonaire has got an airport called the flamingo international airport and when we're in bonaire maybe we'll talk a little bit more about that but yeah red phone booth how interesting and it looks to be working so many of the ones in the uk actually no longer work but this one i think seems to be working and car telephone and some information here the marketplace so which is what this complex is called over there and yeah just a closer shot of the flamingos here That's the parliament we were earlier. Yeah, just absolutely lovely to walk around here. Along the harbour front. Some people taking the day out. I see and there you can see another plane approaching. Bringing more tourists to this part of the world. a plane and just another shot there of a seaport casino and the marketplace with the flamingos and whilst at the restaurant i actually spoke with a, one of the staff who told me that the traffic is a huge problem here in aruba so they basically confirmed what i mentioned in my other vlog where we explored the beaches that it takes him without traffic it takes him about nine minutes to get to work but with traffic in order to start his shift at eight o'clock he needs to leave at around seven so the peak times apparently can be very very 
difficult to negotiate. For me, my immediate thought is now crossing the road. I probably should have used that crossing over there, but I want to take you here to the Renaissance Resort so you can check out a little bit more of a luxury of the island. Actually, I'll just go now, take my chances before this truck and and we'll also see some more blue horses along the way not to be climbed on but yeah they all have little bits of information about part and buy which you can read there as well part and buy brings us back to a time where an abundance of grass was widely available for the livestock so the horses of Aruba, Harden, Harden Bay. Right, Renaissance Resort, and obviously I had quite an expensive lunch for my standards, so about $33 at the Dutch Pancake House. If you think that's expensive, you can take a boat here and go and see the flamingos that will cost you in excess of a hundred dollars so that puts things a little bit in perspective so Aruba is not the cheapest destination yeah obviously just look at this beautiful ceiling and here you can come and relax and wait for your boat even have a Starbucks coffee or something and Yeah, let's take advantage of the aircon as well and explore a little bit of the centre here. Oh, it's just beautiful interior. Yeah, it's just lovely. Lovely to mix things up a bit. And show you some of the indoor spaces here. So yeah, lovely. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, it's a restaurant. There looks to be a lookout point. Some games people can play. Obviously basketball on TV, so a lot of American sports. Hello sir, how are you? Oh yes. This is for the Ladi Dar where they can come and hang out at the pool area. Overlooking the Caribbean Sea. If only I had the money to enjoy it as much as these guys did. But hey, no time for relaxing. We've got some exploring to do. And one last shot there of the complex here. The Renaissance. So I mentioned the cost of the water taxi to the Renaissance island go and see the flamingo so here's a tip that I've picked up from some people they say that if you do want to do that it might be better to actually book a room at the Renaissance Hotel just take it on the chin and then you can go to the island as many times as you want you can also enjoy other amenities and other perks yeah now the wind has picked up a bit guys so I hope the quality He's still all right. Yeah, Renaissance Resort. Urania Stadt. So yeah, clearly uh, a lot of luxury around here as well. And I will do a separate vlog where I walk around the residential parts or some residential parts here in Urania Stadt to give you a different perspective of life on the island so it's not all glamorous and it's not all ladi da but definitely over here there's a few dollars that get spent i guess rolex ralph lauren prada and not to mention these magnificent restaurants here as well to sit there with a beautiful view Fox 
bikes on the road as well as well as cars so not helping the traffic I guess now I know what's causing the Aruba traffic jams look at that guy on the tractor and a pretty chilled cow over here here you've got Wind Creek Crystal Casino next to Louis Vuitton and a tourist information kiosk which is shut at the moment they were open earlier I asked for some directions but it looks like they are having a bit of island time a bit of a siesta and yeah guys I think it's time to cross the road again just to see some more of the shops over there and some of the other shops oh, yeah. thank you sir what have we got here the paddock and I guess some stands where you can come and take your picture put your head there where the, where the neck is Heineken and uh, here's a very colorful cow colorful cow and yeah do not sit so drunk students take note of that and yeah here we get more of a stalls here in Aruba I think it's for sale hello sir how are you very very good check these flip-flops which you can hang up Aruba when life gives you limes make margaritas brilliant yeah, yeah, check out Check out some of the shirts here, Aruba, One Happy Island, caps, keychains, shot glasses, walking sticks, something for everyone. And of course, being an island, you're going to get lots of shells on the beach and some uh, beautiful art. Hello, hi. Yeah, Aruba, one happy island. And wait for this, the postcard of Aruba. Well, that's probably his beaches, but this building comes pretty close because if you Google Uranjestad, this is one of the images that comes up immediately. look at the detail on it and pastel pink and the green shades over there makes it stand out yeah let's cross here cross the road you can see Tommy Hilfiger, Cardi Yeah, absolutely beautiful. Yeah, some more high-end shops in here. And some directions maybe to some shops. And that clock is not working, I've noticed that earlier, it's not 5 to 12. Yes, I think it's called Royal Plaza. And whether that is just that building there or if it's the whole complex, I don't know. So someone in the comments could confirm for us. That would be great. But yeah, what an, what an iconic part of Uranjestad. The postcard of a town. And on this side of the street, you've got a lot of jewellery shops. Jewellers and more jewellers there. The police, I think, and Shivers, maybe named after the Hindu god. All right, let's cross here. Thank you, sir. Yeah, so let's walk a little bit here through the Royal Plaza. They got a Coffee Republic Aruba. Yeah, just look at the beautiful detail here. The true taste of Havana in Aruba. 
yeah yeah you can see some of the beautiful interior of this shopping complex and over there as well just look at the beautiful plants yeah just some more of the shops here and beautiful railings and street lights little switzerland a few shops and there's even a lift up there you can take beautiful balconies and more of the detail over there and some much needed water for i was going to say for some plants but it's just down here over there yeah just look at it over there i actually just want to show you this building from the other side of the road yeah again beautiful detail beautiful lights up here and some more shops beautiful tiles almost gives a spanish touch here to aruba and yeah obviously this is on the other side and you can immediately feel the difference in the pace of life look there's practically no one here but just on the other side there on the road next to the harbour there are loads of people and loads of cars so not that i'm a traffic expert in aruba but maybe for that chap who wants to get to work a bit earlier maybe use the back streets forget about the the main streets but anyway guys look at this this is an absolutely beautiful building i love this pastel pink just look at the size of some of the engravings absolutely beautiful and here's some more shops here i presume it's a little bit cheaper to rent a place to sell your stuff here on this side and just checking the detail from up closer here building royal plaza absolutely brilliant and walking towards the jewelry shops over there i think this is a major bus station in aruba as well aru bus probably worth going there if you want to explore different parts of the island yeah what have we got here just some advertisements iguana joe's seems to be a popular watering hole here in urania stadt and there's another blue horse i wonder how many of them there are here in urania stadt yeah here's a local tip from roseanne so look at that Pica de papaya is Aruba's locally grown hot sauce. You can find it in many souvenir shops and markets. All right, I actually quite like this initiative of a local giving you some tips. I don't think I've seen that in other parts of the world. So there may not be a lot of information on the information boards, so that's a shame. Yeah, this is just off the main street, but you also have Lots of coffee shops, gelato, pastry places as well. And yeah, a large number of cars on the island. That is something I've noticed. People drive, they don't walk. Maybe it's because it is very hot to do so. Check this out, guys. A local car wash. A Vanza car wash. Where you can uh, get your vehicle cleaned. And some beautiful street art as well here Kong Hing Supermercado so another supermarket hello sir and another blue horse yeah, here's another blue horse of Aruba so today we find ourselves reclaiming part of our identity with the introduction of these horses into public space within layers of history and complexities of our past are being negotiated here you go. One of the reasons why these blue horses are so profound around the city, so widespread. And they're nice to look at as well, although I've been warned not to climb on them. 
And here seems to be the National Archaeological Museum and beautiful colorful buildings again again the Dutch flag and the Aruban flag and yeah wow look at this boat here this wooden boat or a canoe rather the canoe is a gift from the Wayu community of Colombia people of Aruba so the Wayu I know the Wayu bags, the handbags are popular, so those are the same people who have donated this boat to the people of Aruba. This kid has thrown away Batman and Spider-Man and he's playing with a nurse doll. That to do with a pandemic perhaps? People uh, Celebrating the... Oh, I thought he was honking at me there. People celebrating the success of their health service, perhaps. Yeah, these are some of the back streets here in Orania Stadt. You can see some of the buildings here. Very need of a bit of TLC. But still a nice red colour green fence and some more mustard yellow paint yeah derelict or not I quite like the red color another car wash yeah, in Urania Stadt so with a lot of traffic comes an opportunity for people to open a car wash business and that makes sense now so not just cars but also beach scooters and Driftwood Restaurant here in Schoolstraat in the One Happy Island. Let's go there. Be the change. Message to you all. Welcome aboard Driftwood Restaurant. And a big sign, ladies choice. Pastel pink building. And yes, some more restaurants here with different colors of paint. But I have to say the light mustard, yellow mustard is a very popular choice here in Urania Stadt. Here's some information for us on uh, this building here. So a townhouse, probably built around 1946. Private residence restored in the 1990s. Beautiful townhouse here in Wilhelminastraat. walking down here so beautiful restaurants even though the outside of some of the places here needs a little TLC I think it all adds to the character of Uraniestad and wow look at this building here the style a type of Dutch art yeah this is the first time I think I've ever seen this type of art depicted on a building so I very, very cool. Oh gosh, what have we got here? What building is this? I don't know, it looks pretty official, but it also looks like it needs some TLC. And yeah, gosh, look at this. I absolutely love it. Look at the roof, the windows there at the top, and the red and orange. Absolutely beautiful. And check out some of the houses here. Wow. This is brilliant. Look at the uh, the plants outside. People love the potted plants or potted flowers here in Oranjestad. Actually, as derelict as it is, I actually quite love it. Ministry of Jesus Christ International. So Jesus Christ International, maybe. Check this out. 
its balcony with supportive columns and its terrace with a basin near the cistern as well as the characteristic gables add to the character of the surroundings yeah absolutely and the value of this building is enhanced by its location among several other historic buildings on Bunnel and Minastra. Okay, so maybe this isn't really off the tourist trail. This may just be off the business trail. We've got some derelict buildings here, so it's clear that they lack the economic injection that's needed to sustain themselves. Still a very nice area to come and walk around. And here you've got Bistro de Seikertein. Sugar Garden. Some daily specials and nice seating areas. Looks absolutely brilliant. And taste my Aruba. And still lots of restaurants over here. So lots of coffee shops and they must all compete for the same tourist money. So I'm not surprised if many are closed or if many of them struggle to make a success of a business it must be tough look there the cupcake garden we love to make desserts for the people who love to eat them yeah that's a great motto and just to give you another shot here not just this is a bit of shade but it's very picturesque so i have to say guys i absolutely love wilhelmina straat here in oranjestad different mix of architecture lots of different colors and yes, there are buildings that need a bit of TLC, but as was the case in Tbilisi, I actually quite like it. I think it adds significantly to the character of a town. Even the heat and the wind does not seem as troublesome walking in this area, because in the busier areas, it can get to you. Which building do you think receives the most funding here in Oranjestad? This one? Or this one? Well, I did mean it a bit tongue-in-cheek because there is a restoration project for this building here. Wilhelmina Straat 7, the former house of Frederico Maximilian Arends. It was an urban villa constructed in 1936, so this property ranks among the best examples of the work of a Ruben architect, Dara Picus. So I wonder what it would look like after the restoration. And I wonder if it will put that one to shame. We'll have to wait and see, I guess. And just more of the architecture here on Wilhelmina Street. You can see people restoring this one as well. Just a lovely area to come and explore. I've just noticed for the first time the Uranjestad streetcar system, the tram. Fantastic. And this is the tram from the front with the Aruba sign there and the coat of arms. <laughs> wow guys, look at that. Sierra's juice from South Africa. On display here in Uranjestad. A bit of home away from home. In Aruba. Alright guys, I am going to take a bus to one of the beaches and have a swim in the Caribbean Sea. So I think I've earned that after a long day of walking. If you haven't done it yet, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment for me in the comment section. I'd love to hear what you think of Uranjestad and Aruba. And I think one of these buses will take me there. Just have to find out which one. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching my videos. I'll see you again soon. Cheers.